Thunderbolt, baby. You too. We have the brand new MSI Claw. This is the Ultra 5 version. I do have an Ultra 7 coming in uh, tomorrow. So I will be comparing these two performance wise and seeing if there's really a difference. Is it worth paying the extra little, you know, premium in order to get the Ultra 7, which is gonna be the hotter, more powerful packing chip than the Ultra 5. But Intel is finally here. Intel has finally entered the handheld gaming market with Intel Arc. This is about to be fun. This is super dope. So I'm looking forward to this. And as you can see, it does look quite familiar to something that we're used to. <laughs> but there are some slight changes. Like I can see they went more for the ergonomic route right here in the grips, which I appreciate because that means I possibly would not need a third party add-on in order to add that comfortability. Very reminiscent back buttons as a similar product, but what's very different from that similar product is the amount of venting on the back portion. So that's super nice to see. Always gotta love that, especially they know they got those Ultra 7s, which are probably gonna be packing more heat than the Ultra 5. So good design choice. Um, supposed to be some really good speakers on here, two watt high res audio and all of that goodness. But at the end of the day, we're gonna test all of that. And staying true to the PC thing, we got the X, Y, A, B buttons. <laughs> this layout is very familiar, but really a uh, nice button. I know it's supposed to have like, I think the hall, hall effects, you know, you know what it is, the magnetic joints. Uh, we'll get more in details. R, B, L, B, feel good. Triggers feel fit pretty decent. Paddles feel pretty good. Joysticks, pretty fair. Like I wish they had an option either for uh, adjusting the tension on your joysticks on all of these handhelds or just giving us a little bit more of a slightly, you know, higher tension joystick uh, reaction. But before I boot this up, let me pull out the other handhelds because you guys know, if you don't know, I've covered pretty much the top dogs in the space and they're mainly AMD based. So give me a second. Boom. The tried and true Asus ROG Ally, which is the one that has the most resemblance <laughs> to the device that we're looking at today. As you guys can see, very reminiscent of one another. Obviously I have this accessory on here, which I had to add, or I wanted to add for my personal comfort. And I highly recommend because not only does it give ergonomics and so forth to this, but it acts as a stand. <laughs> and I mean, these are handheld PCs. I'm pretty sure they only have so much of a reference or area to go when it comes in innovation, but someone was a little bit more innovative in their design. As we go to the next case, we get into our case in point, the Lenovo Legion Go, which is by far one of the more innovative and outside the box thinking handheld PC in comparison to these two offerings. Handles come off kind of like Joy-Cons in a sense, but not necessarily very much different. And uh, they also have that FPS mode, which I actually enjoy on here. It'll take some time to get used to. Decent little venting, but that also has the built-in stand, but not as much vent coverage as the MSI Claw. So these two are AMD based, while this one is Intel based. And that's the exciting portion in the moment, as well as how well it performs ergonomically. Wi-Fi 7 on this thing. A lot of great, great, great newer tech inside of this bad boy since it's come a lot later than the other. So Lenovo Legion Go, I still have an updated video coming on this a long term because I've been able to travel with it and use it in like all situations. Same thing with the uh, Asus ROG Ally. My long term on this is literally right around the corner. Those videos will probably be dropping right after this one. There were some things about this one that people hope to see improved which possibly the MSI Claw have addressed. You know, we had the meltdown in the micro SD card area due to, I guess, non-proper exhaust cooling or getting those heat temps out. This has the fingerprint sensor and so does the MSI Claw. It has the micro SD card slot as well in a similar area. At the end of the day, they're very much similar, but I'm pretty sure they're gonna be very much different once we get under the hood or maybe not. And that's the whole point of these videos. So let's get into it. All right. Let's boot up for the first time. Uh, let's follow the instructions. The instructions are for you to update Windows and then update the MSI, uh, what was it called? MSI Live. So let's follow directions. RGB, little surroundings. 
Any other RGB hints? Really light. That's my first impressions. This in my hand is actually very light. Man, in comparison to the other ones, this is a really light device. I like that. That is gonna add to, you know, extended gameplay and comfort for sure. The ergonomics right now in hand are feeling good. I gotta, man, I gotta give it to them. Now, I was at CES 2024 and I had an opportunity to you know, look at it, check it out. I didn't really like get too deep playing with it because your boy is lightweight german and you know that uh, CES code or whatever it is <laughs> that be going around, I wanted no parts of it. They got my player C kid. They ain't get me though. <laughs> and my man was touching on the, uh, <laughs> he was one that touched it. I actually just shot uh, f a B-roll footage. I was like, I'm good, bro. So this has the typical, you know, Windows setup, proper Windows setup because these are proper gaming Windows PCs. Like, all of the things that you can get in a full laptop or a full, you know, custom built PC, you technically get in here in a nice small package. And you know, that comes with its pluses and its minuses, but more pluses than minuses in my opinion. Let me connect to my Wi-Fi 7 router. We're gonna do a speed test. Let me hit my little uh, passcode. Cause you know, y'all nosy, I can't let y'all see that. Hold on. Boom, checking for updates. And that's the first thing the instructions told us to do was to get our Windows update going. Um, I'm pretty sure it comes with pre, you know, release, you know, updates and so forth. So are you guys excited for Intel to enter this gaming handheld PC arena? Have you guys been looking forward to this? Are you guys excited to see Intel Arc? What are your feelings? What are your true thoughts down in the comment section below? Let me know. I want to know how you guys are gauging this because, you know, the ROG Ally is a favorite of mine just as much as the Legion Go. The Legion Go is a beast, <laughs> you know what I mean? A massive beast with a lot packing and uh, all of these devices thus far have been delivering quite well and these are all on the AMD platform. So we finally have Intel in this arena and I'm here for it all, <laughs> yeah. All right, I gotta sign in to my Microsoft account. This is the part that's not fun about when you first get a product is you have to set it up. And I wanna be clear, when you get these gaming uh, handhelds, the setup process is not just turn on and get the plan. You have to set it up like a proper PC, Windows PC. So it's gonna take a little bit of time, but it's not terrible, but it's just something you gotta go through. It's a part of the process. You're gonna have to download the games. No different than when you get your brand new PS5. You're gonna have to download the games and go through the setup process. Yeah, people will be trying to act like consoles just plug and go when you first get it. It's not. There's a setup process to everything technical, right? And technology wise. So you guys can see, welcome back CJ. You know, they know who I am. Windows, you know, you know. <laughs> uh, do I wanna restore from another PC? Should I restore from like one of my other handhelds? Now nah, we're gonna do it fresh. So you can zoom in and zoom out with the triggers. And that's gonna help you because you're gonna wanna hit more options. Uh, they had that hidden from me. You see, I felt like I was trapped for a second until I found that. Okay, so now we get to set up our fingerprint sensor. And the fingerprint sensor is right here on the left. I like to do my thumbs for fingerprint sensor. I wonder can I do another one? All right, confirming my super secure secret pin and uh, getting my windows going. Let's go, come on. You know, we turn off all this. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't need my location. I don't need none of that. Oh yeah, we do find my device though. Should I do that? Yeah, I probably should. Huh? So as you guys can see, we're finally getting that update, which is the first step. That good old Windows update, which is downloading on this good old Wi-Fi 7. And uh, from the looks of it, it looks like it's gonna take a little second. So uh, yeah, I'll be back. All right. Just did a quick little setup. I got my Call of Duty on here via Steam. We're gonna run that really fast. But before we get into there, when you take a look at the quick menu, as you can see, you have access to brightness, sound, power. Uh, you have your AI engine user scenario, which you can change it from balance, super battery, manual, or performance and so forth. I'm gonna have to look into that a little bit deeper, the performance size, because I, I wanna make sure I'm getting the highest TDP when I start playing, right? So you got your Bluetooth on and off, and you also have this real-time monitor, which can give you CPU, uh, fan RPMs, FPS, and things of that nature. So uh, I will definitely turn that on, even though I get it out of COD, but why not test what's native here? Now, if we go inside of here, <laughs> and we tap right there, now you have AI engine, and then we have the extreme performance, a configuration that boosts the highest possible performance for heavy tasks, the best operational performance, right? And AI engine automatically optimizes this system settings via MSI AI engine. I do wanna test that as well, but for right now, I'm gonna start off with extreme, and then from there, I will jump into gamepad, desktop mode, 
You can customize all of your buttons as you guys can see. This is your quick settings editor. What I'm gonna do is I'm about to boot up Call of Duty. Okay, a couple of slices of pizza later and some audio music turned down to avoid copyrights. And they also have Dead Zone um, settings for the joysticks on this thing. Actually, let me go check them out. So if I tap in here, tap on gamepad mode on the left, if I go to, let's see, sticks, see? We got dead zones, move them dead zones down. Whoa, we got an error after I did that. That's crazy, I wonder. All right, so I don't know if that caused uh, Call of Duty to crash, but the second I changed the dead zones, COD crashed, so. All right, let's get some multiplayer gameplay going. I have to agree not to be toxic, which I'm not that toxic. Let me see what my paddles are set to. Okay, my paddles are not activating anything right now. Okay, so basically you have to create the macro first and then you're able to assign it to the macro keys on the back. So that's how that works. So if you wanted to create a macro, you just hit add, you're gonna give it a name, you tap record, you press the button. After that, you hit the stop and then you tap save and then Upon doing that, you'll get this, and then you can tap on the side of it and give it which one of the macro buttons you want to give it. If you look at all of my settings, they're like low, off. So it's aggressive for performance, honestly, at this point when you see this. So there's no excuse for me not to be pumping out like high quality FPS. In essence, as far as in comparison to the competitors, I could feel the uh, heat being dissipated out of the rear. Hopefully, look at my ping. My ping is at 75 milliseconds. Give me a second, wait a minute. Do I need to do a speed test again? Yeah, this Wi-Fi setup is not my favorite results thus far. Look, it just dropped back down. So my Wi-Fi is not consistent. And that's kind of unfortunate because I have really, really good uh, Wi-Fi. All right, I'm gonna switch Wi-Fi network. All right, so there we go. We got way better speeds now. All right, let's see. There we go, we're getting better. Well, whoa, okay. Okay, I don't know what that was. You know, COD, I don't understand why they took away showing us the latency. Like, what's up with that? Like, I noticed that even on my PC, they don't want you to know when your server is bad. Like, what, is, what are they hiding? Bro, I'm getting, okay. And I don't know if that's server or if that's, uh, you know, GPU performance where I'm getting that weird little breakup that I'm getting. Bro, okay. <laughs> Bro, what's going on, bro? Yeah, my FPS is just take a dive. Like, my frames per second, which, which is crazy, it just randomly does that. I don't know, it's not looking too positive so far. What's going on, bro? I'm in legit extreme performance mode. Oh my gosh, packet burst. Okay, so that's the packet burst when I get that drama right there. So I understand this is only the Ultra 5 version, but my goodness, my goodness. Oh, I got finish move, bro, I got disrespected. Oh, bro, like, packet burst is crazy. I'm gonna have to test it plugged into an ethernet cable, because this is not ideal. Well, we won, but it wasn't because of me. All right, so really quick, I'm gonna hook up my hub. If you guys want one of these, I'll uh, link it down in the description below, but it allows you to get a lot of ports and settings and things. Boom, go ahead and connect this ethernet cable in here. I might need to change my FOV too. Absolute mayhem. Oh, that one does take a little bit more pressing to get to like the, uh, if you're trying to throw a tactical or like a grenade, you gotta make sure you hit that. Like you gotta hit that, hit that. So I feel like with the joysticks, like for real, like the movements. And look, I got a dead zone of like zero. Look at this. And it's not engaging until you hit the wall. It's kind of like the Lenovo's and that was one of my issues. Yeah, I feel like I'm not getting those fine tuned movements on the joystick, it's like kind of jumpy. And like a game like this, like being able to get those like small uh, details in your joystick aim is like everything. It's like the difference between you winning the fight and not. Okay, okay, keyboard mouse setup really quick. I'm not gonna lie, Windows is definitely favorable to use with a keyboard and mouse. 
I don't care how you try to cut it, like touch screen, especially on these smaller uh, screens, man, it's not as pleasant at all. I'm not getting ethernet, which is crazy. So, I, oh, you know what? I probably need a 100 watt power delivery over here. All right, so I got my 130 watt GAN charger right here. And you know, the crazy thing is on like the Lenovo, I would see packet bursts up there, but I wouldn't see a, a, a drop in performance. It would still maintain like my FPS. I still was able to game. Like it would say that up there, but it wasn't affecting anything. But like right here, as you guys can see, packet bursts is literally crippling my gameplay right now. And it's kind of sad. So I made a few graphical changes. Hopefully this impacts my gameplay in a bit. Oh no, it's not packet burst right off the rip. Look at this, this is crazy, okay. Packet burst, like crazy. Yeah, keyboard and mouse was not. Oh man, did not go good. Okay, when I say this thing is hot, it's hot. Okay, let me go back to the regular original uh, power. Man, listen, whoo boy. You know, listen, man. <laughs> I don't sugarcoat anything. I share ex my truthful and exact experiences. Um, again, this is early adopter. You know, this is first release. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's going to be issues. They're going to have to get feedback from, you know, the people to help them uh, address some of the issues. It's just not performing as I believe it can and should be. Okay, so I just ran a benchmark test on the MSI Claw inside of Call of Duty, and the results are actually shocking and very interesting. Like, the CPU was capable of running up to 102 FPS and so forth, but the GPU was the bottleneck. Topping out at, I think, around like 52 or 54 max frames per second that it was capable of, and under bottleneck, under GPU, it said 100%. So the GPU is 100% the bottleneck, to this device and yes this is intel arc this is new you know amd graphics cards they've been doing this for a while they have experience nvidia graphics card been doing this for a while they have experience i'm not saying intel does not have experience they've been around for a long time but the intel arc is a you know it's a new thing and hopefully 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 for the sake of that you know, and what it is and what it can be, it can be unlocked or fixed or optimized for better performance. But as of right now, the GPU is the bottleneck 100% confirmed. In playing this and looking at the FPS, it felt like it was capable of more, but it was just being held back. And exactly what was holding it back, the graphics card. Not what I anticipated. It's not what I expected. And it just is what it is. Whew. All right, so I was getting packet lost while doing keyboard and mouse and trying to, uh, okay, my macros are not working now. Oh, there we go, okay, all right. Don't know why I had to go and reactivate my macros in order for them to work, but I did. Whoa, whole squad. <laughs> oh, getting packet burst. Wow, Call of Duty is just not in favor of Man, Call of Duty is giving this thing the blues. I'm not even gonna lie. I remember one dude was like, you can't test performance with COD. Oh, okay, uh, you know that that meme, uh, bullshit, bullshit. <laughs> yeah, I'm in extreme performance. The Ultra 5 just is not it, bro. That one's definitely not gonna compete with the ROG and the uh, Legion Go, I can tell you that now. Y'all see how like awkward it was for me to get my aim, even, like, even though that wasn't an enemy, but it was just like really awkward because of the way the joysticks react. Now, I'm not saying I can't cook a little bit with it, you know, cause these are kind of reminiscent of the Lenovo joysticks. So it looks like the AI mode gets you higher uh, CPU wattage, cause I'm at that 41, 42, versus when I was even in extreme performance, it only capped out at 35. So if you want to go higher than, 30, than the, um, 35, you got to put it on this AI scenario, which is probably the most, typical and ideal setting for everyone. 
But my FPS is sitting around like 62, 63. So it's like, it makes me question like when I unplug this, what type of performance will I actually get? This is first gameplay, so I can't like be too critical on it. Like I gotta give myself time to adjust to them as well as I need to give them some time to get some updates out because I know they're gonna have them. All right, we are unplugged. Uh, as you guys see, I'm in AI engine scenario. Like for me, when it comes to these gaming handhelds, my like goal and my hope and my ambition is around like 90 frames per second. You know, get me closer to that 100 frames per second. Let me feel like I'm doing something, at least over anyone who's running around on the 60 hertz or 60 FPS. Don't let me be the 60 FPS out here, you know? Uh, the only people who would be at 60 would be people who are on like, what, PlayStation 4? I play at 240 FPS when I'm out here playing on my new cousin PC, which you guys are gonna see soon. Um, and even before that, I was at about like 190, 180. Interesting. The FPS, that's about the same spot. 60 FPS, which is good. Uh, it's kind of unfortunate that when you plug in, you don't get extra, because that's what I experienced on the other uh, devices. Is when I plugged in, I actually got higher performance. You know, the funny thing is, it seems like this thing plays better unplugged, like for real. Oh, that's crazy. Like it plays better, like maybe they spent most of their optimization and you know, R&D on unplugged gameplay. And I'm at about what, 30 watts to 33 watts, 35 watts, somewhere around there, which is solid. That's where we wanna be. I am still getting packet, packet bursts, but it's not hindering the gameplay it seems. It's like, it seems like it's doing all right. I'm gonna tell you like this, do not plug and play. Like unplug this thing. This thing plays way better not using its wall adapter. Oh my goodness, look at that. Now that's what I'm talking about. Now that's more of my gameplay. Let's go, this thing running smooth like this. Oh yeah, let's go. I'm starting to get a little used to it though. And hence I just got my first legit kill streak. Oh actually, yeah, I went all the way to an SAE, baby. Let's go. Oh no, oh we still got it, let's go baby. Triple kill too on that one. So this thing works better on battery. That's, a, that's wow. Yeah, this works actually. Actually now I'm starting to enjoy myself. I switched the battery only and it's performing as it should be. There, hard scope with that. Dang, that went quick. Uh, but I actually did way more closer to my gameplay than any of those times before, so. I'm really thrown off at the fact that I'm getting better performance and a smoother gameplay unplugged versus if I'm plugged into the power delivery. Because on all of the other, you know, systems, which are different, you know, they have AMD and so forth, when you plug in and give them more power, they perform better. Whew! What an interesting first play, first day. Oh my goodness. So, uh, I booted up Call of Duty because, you know, that's one of my games of choice that I like to play on the handhelds, one of my games of choice that I like to play the most. So, you know, if I'm gonna judge this thing, you know, from a personal perspective, as well as a, you know, all, all around constructive perspective, I gotta play like my game that I'm gonna play and, and share my gaming experience. And uh, it started off very rocky, very, very rocky. But once I um, got off of power delivery, let me see what Wi-Fi I was just connected to. Okay, I'm on Wi-Fi 7, so I'm assuming I'm actually getting Wi-Fi 7 speeds because it was pretty solid. Actually, it's not even like, well, yes, yeah, it's, it's solid, it's okay. So I'm getting okay speeds, right? Not my best of my best, but not my worst of my worst. So, my conclusion is early adopter syndrome for this as of right now. Now, it's not terrible, it's not the worst, it, it, it started off rough and rocky for me, I'm not even gonna lie, but it got better and smoother the second I unplugged it, which is just, I just can't wrap my head around that because again, like I said, the other systems that I've used in the past or have been using, it does the opposite, it gets better. This one gave me more of the typical experience on battery. I'm still looking forward to getting the Ultra 7 in. I'm not super impressed with the Ultra 5. Uh, it wasn't terrible, it was smooth on battery, and I'm still just conflicted about the power delivery thing. Okay, now, if I move the whole little power situation that I just had as far as, you know, plugged and unplugged, uh, ergonomics were really good. I didn't have any issues all of this time. I've been uh, filming and recording, trying to get gameplay 
for hours. I haven't had any fatigue. So that's a W in the design department for this. And that's even with it being wider and heavier than the ROG Ally. Obviously not the Legion Go, cause that thing is just massive. I found that comfort that I did not have with the ROG Ally before I made my accessory upgrade. So that right off the bat is a super positive updating process and drivers and their UI and everything so far has been pretty solid. I had a you know a few hiccups, but my only hiccups came when I had this thing plugged in. Again, I think there's something funny happening there. There's probably gonna be an update to help address that. Outside of that, the overall experience is actually pretty good. It wasn't the best. It wasn't where I expected it to be or where I thought it would go. All right, so let me just say this. The saving grace to today's you know, opinion about this device was uh, how it performed on battery. Now, as far as my you know, comments on the joystick and that grip point, you know, this is the Hall Effects uh, Joy-Cons, joysticks or whatever. And it's similar to the Legion Go, which kind of took some time for me to get used to. I'm not all the way fully used to these style of joysticks. Now I get it. They're less likely to get stick drift. And the fact that, you know, these are affixed to something and are far more pain to change if you were to need to do that. It makes sense, you know, from a longevity perspective of someone having this thing and being able to use it for a while before, you know, encountering any type of stick drift. So I understand it. It's just a different technology and you just gotta get used to it because it's more like magnetic driven versus the other way. You know, these bumpers, for some people that I, I can see, they probably won't like it. You probably have to develop the habit of how to hit it to get it to click easier. Most people are used to just pressing like this, but it's actually easier if you hit it like that. But think about it, if I'm like boom, 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 I, I, I could get that. I could uh, see myself um, develop into that. Um, from a design standpoint, this thing looks nice. The AI thing is actually pretty cool because the AI actually made better decisions and kind of gave a better experience. So the main thing I want to look forward to is using this thing for some days and giving you guys, you know, a days later or maybe even a week later update as well as doing the Ultra 5 versus the Ultra 7. As soon as I get the Ultra 7 in, I'm going to see what that experience is like. I'm going to set it up and then uh, I will compare my results of the Ultra 7 to the Ultra 5 and just be able to give more, you know, in depth to that conversation because a lot of people are going to be wondering can I, you know, go for the cheaper model or the cheapest model and still get ideal performance or is the Ultra 7 worth it? You know, it's a premium to go in that realm in comparison, you know, especially when you look at the competition and obviously they've been out longer and they have like better discounts around the ROG Ally and the uh, Legion Go. But yeah, this is, this is still not what I expected. Uh, I'm not fully disappointed. I'm not fully satisfied because I'm trying to be optimistic considering how early it is. And I don't want to be, you know, too overly critical because we know how this stuff goes. It releases, there's bumps in the road, they iron it out as we go. And then, you know, a good three months in, two months in, we see it mature. So it's too early to be too harsh, but I do have some slight concerns or like, you know, slight lack of confidence points yeah new gpu new handheld pc new hurdles to jump peace Ooh. crazy long and a capital b to edit but i had to get it to you guys and i had to keep it authentic new watch no diamonds new watch good timing yeah New watch, no diamonds, new watch, good timing, yeah. Need no middleman, I'm the man of man, send it in. I like what I like, me, I know my rights, it's sipping in. I like having fun, I do what I want, it's what it is. For my son and son, for my daughters, yeah, it's for my twin. I work through the night.